Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Since we already started once again with Japanese battleships, uh, and a lot of people have been asking me recently, I figured uh, I'll give the Amagi a try. The Tier 8 Tech Tree battleship. Well, I say battleship, it isn't really. Uh, the reason I've been kind of holding back was because I was actually finished with the grind of the Nagato, but I'm still, I still have to finish the, uh, the career missions. Uh, the battle honors thing, not the career missions, the battle honors on the Nagato. And um, that's why the Amagi was a little bit uh, delayed. And so now I'm just going to switch over to press and have, get, have a quick try. So uh, the Amagi class battle cruisers, because that's what they really were. These were ships that were actually laid down and were part of the Japanese pl plan of rearmament <laughs> or of modernizing their, their navy uh, as much as they could in the interwar period, given that the British had uh, developed the dreadnought where the Japanese thought they had uh, a viable fleet of battleships and then the next day they didn't because dreadnought appeared and um, relegated everything else uh, as target ships or scrap iron. So they were building uh they were building actual battleships and they were building a somewhat watered down version of the tosa class battleship which was going to be the amagi and thinner armor uh, better speed but uh, pretty much the same guns otherwise and that's what we get here at tier 8 now uh, amagi herself was never completed uh, she and her sister akagi were the first two to be built but uh, then two things happened First, the Washington Naval Treaty, which said, uh, no, you can't build ships that size, period. Uh, and uh, and a, a big earthquake in Tokyo, which uh, destroyed or damaged the hull sufficiently that she was of no longer use. The uh, Her sister, Akagi, on the other hand, actually survived. And that's because the Japanese, while well, the Japanese had a problem that they couldn't actually retain ships that of that dis uh, displacement, uh, the Americans had as well, because they were building the Lexington-class battle cruisers. And um, since both the Americans and the Japanese had the same problem, they proposed, hey, why don't we, uh, why don't we put a side note in here that uh, you can keep them provided that you're turning them into aircraft carriers. So that's what they did. And that's what we got the, how we got the, Lexington class, uh, the USS Lexington as an aircraft carrier. And the Akagi was actually an Amagi-class battlecruiser that got turned into an aircraft carrier. So that still actually happened. Uh, but yeah, the, the rest didn't didn't really go go to plan. So, what do we what do we have? Let's let's have a quick quick look at the Japanese uh, at the Japanese tech tree actually. And uh, the Japanese have have some pretty good battleships so far. You've got the um, you've got the Congo, which is a British battle cruiser technically, but which is a pretty good uh, mid tier mid tier battleship. It's it's surprisingly quick. The Fuso is a decent tier 6 ship, lots of guns. Uh, the Nagato is not a bad ship at all. She's quite tanky at tier 7. And uh, once again faster than the American uh, standard battleship things, which are more on the pedestrian side of, of, of sorts. And then we get to tier 8, to the Amagi. So let's, uh, let's start with some comparisons. So let's take the Amagi and her immediate predecessor, the Nagato, and compare these two. Uh, same, same same ship skills, and the Amagi does get a little bit more hit points, but as I mentioned, it's a battle cruiser, it's not a battleship, so she gets worse armor than the Nagato. She also, and here's where it gets weird, gets worse maneuverability than the Nagato. <laughs> okay, the guns are uh, the same 410mm, uh, 45 caliber length, Bar uh, caliber barrel length guns uh, in twin turrets you just get an additional turret and the guns are a little bit better as in they do marginally marginally more damage and have have an, an irrelevant amount of range longer range so these are for all intents and purposes the same guns as on the nagato we only get an additional turret the secondaries while again on paper being completely identical have slightly better range and do a little bit more damage but that's about it and the AA is better. Now this is something where we're going to have to give it to her because she actually does have a noticeably better AA than the Nagato. Uh, and also her concealment is worse. <laughs> so we have a battle cruiser that is, for all intents and purposes, a Nagato with an additional turret and a bit better AA. 
Now, about that turret. So uh, this is not the this is not the Amagi. This is the Nagato. There she is. You see that there's the uh, there's the the third the, the ter third turret here uh, in in behind the superstructure. Uh, the angles that you can get this turret to, to work on, and you can really see it because if you look at the superstructure, the turret really has to kind of get snug to the superstructure to to fire it at any uh, fire at any angle. Uh, the angle is terrible. So if you are going to use that turret, you are going to have to give an uncomfortable amount of broadside. And giving a, giving broadside in something as in something that is thin, more thinly armored than the Nagato, is a tier higher than the Nagato, and has worse maneuverability than the Nagato, is generally considered a bad idea. This is why everybody who sees an Inamagi in, in game usually goes, ah, <laughs> damage piñata. Right, so the the center turret is, the, the additional turret isn't all that useful sometimes, because you just can't get can't get the, the angles that you need. Which means that for all intents and purposes, you have a Nagato with slightly better AA at tier eight. And worse armor. And worse maneuverability. <laughs> and I think this is why people don't like this ship. So, uh, how, how have I set this thing up? Um, kind of standard Japanese battleship cruiser thing set up. Uh, precise aim, because once again, this is not a ship that you necessarily want to get close to. Uh, the dispersion isn't great on these 45 caliber guns, because, well, relatively short barrels and uh, meh. Disper dispersion is kind of average. And uh, in the Nagato, you could com compensate for that by getting close, because she had actually good armor at, for her tier. In this thing, not so much. So this is definitely one you, what you want to go with. Once again, the deck protection mod, same as on the German battleships. Yes, you, it would be really nice to get the propulsion mod. No, I don't recommend it, because you will be burned down, because you're at tier 8. And you know what kind of things are sailing around at tier 8, do you? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm a too fair in tier 7 as well, but yeah. Uh, and we've got the steering in three because you really need all the rudder shift you can get. I have played with double steering for a while. It honestly doesn't make a huge um, huge difference, but uh, uh, yeah, you just burn down to the ground. <laughs> so that gets us to a setup of um, very questionable armor. Uh, Twenty eight sp knot speed isn't bad. Uh, Fourteen point six seconds turn time is pretty de is pretty devastating for a battle cruiser. And yeah, on paper, five twin twin turrets with uh, uh, with a decent range and decent amount of armor. But uh, in in practice, more more often than not, it's actually four. And yeah, what you, you what you have is is pre is okay AA for the tier. Which brings us to the commander. Uh, what have I put in here? Kind of what you would put into a Japanese battleship, to be honest. I have not taken an additional fire supremacy. I can't remember if I've done this on my on my personal account. Uh, you couldn't. You can use uh, three precise aim, a uh, four precise aim in a, in a game uh, and higher tiers if you use them early, and you have the marksman skill. And especially if you're on low hit points and you have to fire from long range, it might come in useful. But um, I have kind of figured yeah, survivalist might be a good skill as well to have with these things. Uh, so that's the setup here. You, you can totally go with an additional um, precise aim. I've got the generalist, I've got marksman skill obviously, and very very definitely the extinguisher skill, because even with the module in slot 2 you are going to get set on fire. Um, what have I forgotten? I have forgotten the elite bonus, yes. You do get a kind of general purpose, make the ship a bit better sort of one, which more hit points, uh, more small caliber AA damage, which at this tier actually starts making a little bit of sense with the re relatively decent AA to begin with. Or you can you can play her for guns. And that's what I went with, because you know me, I'm playing a little bit more aggressively. But if you if you want to play her like full on on long range and um, just more defensively, then the uh, modernization might not be a bad choice for you, because it does give you a little bit more in hit points. You can get a historical camo on the ship, although I don't necessarily know why you would want to, because uh, it's tier 8 and you were kind of... The, the only reason you probably would be playing the Amagi in the first place is to get to the Yamato. <laughs> so, but yeah, if you if you for some reason like the ship and want to keep it, then... Um, uh, and yeah, maybe you want to play on hard mode. Then you can get the historical camo, which gives you hit points, which gives you range, which gives you dispersion and torpedo damage reduction, which is... Uh, 
just all good stuff to have on a Japanese battleship. So that's not a terrible thing to do. All right. Um, yeah, so I, it's not an absolutely terrible ship. But uh, she has her reputation for a reason. Let's let's get into some games. In the first battle, we are top tier. We're up against... Um, actually, the only tier 8 ship in the enemy team is the Z-23. Everything else is tier 7. So we've got Sinop, Nagato, Scharnhorst, Fiji, Brooklyn, Z, and Escorne. And we're playing Atlantic. Uh, not one of my, one of my favorite maps. Uh, just because these, these islands are just uh, making it super hard to... I don't know. With anything except for a destroyer, it's really not a great amount of fun in this this map. Like this, this smattering of small islands, is just um, uh, it's, it's just somewhat irritating. So, uh, what we're going to do in this ship is what we we'll try to stay at range if we can, and uh, we're going to we're going to be going the long way around here and lend okay. some lend some fire support to that Akatsuki in case he runs into one of the cruisers. So I'm probably going to be turning right, yeah, and going around the island. And you, you see the angles on the, the third turret. It's just now, uh, like, they, you see that? Like, this, this is even, this is, a, this is a wide angle even for normal battleships, and I still can't get the, third tur the fifth turret on, on target. So it's, it's, um, you, you're very tempted to broadside in this thing, which is not good for your health. Okay, this is probably about as far as I want to go. Let's drop speed a little bit. We haven't been spotted. We haven't seen anything yet. But uh, there are two destroyers, so one of them is bound to come down this way. And I have the armor piercing loaded in case one of the cruisers shows up, also because we have a cruiser there on the left. And yeah, there's, these, uh, there's the Z-23. Um, from this range, yeah, I'm going to get some shots out. We might get lucky hits, but uh, there is also a Brooklyn. So that's probably more my target. So I'm um, just going to line that thing up. And I think the Brooklyn has just stopped very, very abruptly. I'm not sure how he's doing that, but uh, you can broadside a Brooklyn, but you do have to be careful with other stuff. So uh, yeah, Brooklyn is reversing. So, but now the Z is coming for me because everybody else is, uh, but yeah, our cruiser has decided that destroyers are not something that he needs to deal with. So, um, it's, it's, has he dropped torpedoes? I should have been seeing them by now at this, at this range, but... Um, uh, no? No torpedoes? Okay, then. So, well, let's line him up and um, and see if we can get some... Oh, no, there come the torpedoes. Okay. Uh, a, bit, a bit slower than I thought they were going to be, so we might take one or two, but yeah. Insta flood, of course, but that's fine. We can heal that off. And now the Z23 has run into an island, and uh, we are well. There's only one battleship left, so I'm going to give him another blap in the side before I'm going to switch back to the armor piercing and deal with that cruiser over there. Uh, it wasn't quite enough, but he should be low enough for what's that? That's an Easer for the Easer to take him out. So if the Easer wouldn't mind, um, just you know, kill that thing. Or, you know, the cruiser that's sitting in the center of the map trying to broadside battle it out with our battleship, with the enemy battleship over there. You know, there's a Z-23 that you could do something about. I don't know, just as a suggestion. Uh, does tier 8 still count? Well, it's tier 7, really. Oh, there's the Brooklyn again. And he seems to be sitting stationary. So maybe he's got connection so issues. I don't know. But, um, yeah, you don't get to sit stationary. I, um, I shall punish you most severely for that. Uh, that's the other thing that's very inconvenient about this map. It's full of islands that you run into. But um, let's see if, we do, if the Brooklyn wakes up at any moment. It's going to take a while to kill him. Oh, yeah, no, no, he's actually awake. He's not AFK. He's just not looking at me at all. He's looking at the other direction. So now he's noticed me. But uh, yeah, that's not going to help you, buddy. And uh, you don't actually want to fire high explosive at me, especially not at this range. You actually want to use armor piercing into the bow stern if you want to do some damage. But um, however you're going to be doing it, uh, you're going to be dead. So you are not surviving this encounter. And I've got a Nagato back there that I want to play with. Now you see, I'm at full health almost. That Nagato is at half health. I'm a tier 8 battleship. Uh, this, is if, this is literally my predecessor. So let's see what it takes for me to take that thing on. First of all, I'm actually going to have to hit him. Because, uh, yeah, when he's shooting at me... And we've got the same guns pretty much, but he has got the better armor. So of course, first of all, he takes out one of my gun turrets. 
and which means that we're now on an, on an even number of guns, but uh, I know the Nagato secondaries, and if this is a secondary built Nagato, I'm not Damaconning that one, because I'll be on triple fire in, in no time if that happens. Although he doesn't seem to realize that he has secondaries, so he's, he's just waiting for his main guns to... No, no, he does. There come the secondaries. So, remember, I was full health, he was on half health when we started this. And uh, I mean, we're, we're going at it here, broadside to broadside, pretty much. But uh, at this close, at this close range, there's not much. It doesn't make much of a difference if you're, if you're giving broadside or not. And I, once again, I need to get that uh, turret on target. So uh, I'm down to half health, and uh, I'm still waiting for my main turret to come back on, and he's still not dead. So um, yeah, you're you're reasonably easy, evenly matched up with a Nagato, and I would say if that was a full health Nagato, this, this wouldn't have been a fight that I was going to take. So that probably tells you something, and uh, this was a bit short, a bit short. It, has, it overpenetrated his stern section, and the Isa takes him up. And now the now Scharnhorst is going for the capture circle, because of course he is, because, uh, yeah, defend our base. So, um, I am shooting at a Scharnhorst at 9 kilometers. Uh, with the precision module. Now look at these shells. <laughs> and I'm not gonna say something. Right? I'm just gonna let these shells do the talking. So explain to me again how battleship, how Japanese battleship excels at long range. <laughs> I mean, that was pathetic, right? I've done what two thousand points of damage to that thing over the course of a minute, firing like three, four salvos at him. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. So uh, yeah, I still can get some shots off at the Synop. Um, but yes, so if you've got broadside, things that sitting on broadside like that Synop over there to, to shoot at, then um, you're good to go. But, um, will you know it? <laughs> it's, we're still getting the MVP. We're still down 77,000 points of damage, all in all. I mean, you can't complain too much. Uh, yeah, but uh, yes, the guns are not the most precise things in the game. That is for certain. So, yeah, well, uh, yeah. Let's let's do another one. <laughs> so this time around, uh, we've got ourselves a base capture on Hourglass, and we are playing bottom tier. We're up against uh, Minnesota, an enemy Amagi, Monarch, Monarch, Azuma, Takao, and uh, Jutland. Now, uh, Monarchs and Amagis, Monarchs don't have great armor either, so probably the Minnesota is going to have a field a field day if he can get his guns to bear. But uh, let's uh, let's see what we can once again come up with. Now, like I said, especially if you're bottom tier in one of those things, you do not want to poke your nose out more than you need to, but you do need to play at range. And you need to pick your targets because as we've also seen, if, if an enemy ship actually maneuvers or, you know, uh, doesn't sit bowing stationary uh, 10 kilometers from you, you actually have a devil of a time hitting the buggers. Uh, that Chapayev seems to be awfully brave, so we're going to give him some fire support here. But um, I'm 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 not sure. I mean, we don't have any scout. I, I was kind of hoping that one of the destroyers would scout, but I think this is about as far as you want to go, Shappy, before um, before we push out any further. I'm already down to half speed because I don't really want to go any further. But it looks like the destroyers are also in no have no interest of scouting over here. I mean, there's lightning that way. So, Lightning, if you would do some scouting, that would be grand, um, Shapayev. Where are you going? 
you had island cover there. I mean, it wasn't great, but you had island cover and you could retreat. Now you're up in the... If they push down this flank, you are toast. You do realize that, right? So, okay. This is as far as I'm willing to go to support you. So, what do we got to shoot at? Monarch. Uh, Monarch, 12 kilometer. Well, let's see what we can do. Uh, we do, once again, give an uncomfortable side of broadside. There's the Minnesota. This is something I do not want to be shot at by. And, um, oh, got two, hint, two hits in on the Monarch. But, uh, okay, Shapayev. Um, you, you, you've seen this, you've seen that you're running straight into two battleships, right? You, you, you've seen that, okay? I, I'm, I'm pointing, I don't have to point that out to you, yeah. That's exactly what happens when you run into two battleships. And once again, two hits for a very disappointing <laughs> damage on the Monarch. Okay, I might be able to give broadside to the Monarch, because that thing's probably firing high explosive. Uh, and try to help out the Shapayev. So let's take the Minnesota under fire. Because that's the one who's also being shot at by the uh, by the Shapi. And now Shapayev has to run. Because there's also a Jutland coming. Uh, okay. well, I'll do what I can. But I am definitely going to go back. Because uh, there's three of them coming down there. And as predicted, Shapayev, you are way uh, way in over your head. You do have to wait until, um, until you at least have an idea where the enemy battleships and heavy hitters are. And get yourself some island cover in the meantime. Uh, so Shapayev is pretty much out of the game at this point because he's so low on health and he's getting shot at by everybody. So I could poke a little bit. I, I would I would go a little bit further out if it wasn't for the Jutland, but um, I don't want to I don't want to run into the torpedoes of that thing if I don't have to. So I was going to try and, and draw some fire maybe. Uh, once again, just a bunch of hits on the on the Minnesota. Uh, Takao is coming around to help out as well, which is good to see. So, um, he's, he's drawing some fire. Okay, come on, shoot, people shoot at me. I'm a full health battleship. Come on, I'm broadsiding, more or less. Uh, shoot at me, stop shooting at my cruisers. Uh, but once again, I, I can't go any further because the, the Jutland is, is smoking up over there. And I don't want to run into a whole flurry of torpedoes. So, okay, now they're starting to shoot at me, which is good. Because that means that uh, Shapayev is still alive. And if Shapayev can kill the Jutland, maybe... Oh no, they're shooting at Shapayev again. If the Shapi can kill the Jutland, come on, shoot at me. Hello. Shoot at the full health battleship, not the low health cruiser. Stop stop being good at the game. What are you doing? <laughs> Do stupid things when you are not on my team. That would be much appreciated. Uh, okay, Shapayev is dead. Amagi takes him out. So now uh, they don't have anything else to shoot at. Yeah, so now they have to shoot at me. Of course, I would have preferred if the Shapayev would have killed the Jutland first, but at least we've got the Minnesota down. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still done. I've still got two heals. I'm okay on hit points, and uh, we have an Amagi to, sh to shoot at. So Amagi versus Amagi. It comes down to RNG, doesn't it? Oh, it's just, once again, the mid that center turret is killing me in terms of. Oh yeah, great dispersion. Thank you. Uh, one hit at least, and the dude land is somewhere out there. How does it look in the rear? Uh, we're, we're two kills on two kills, but we had on points. And uh, I am I am back against the wall pretty literally, and I think the Jutland just set me on fire. Yeah, I'm not gonna damage on that, my friend. You gotta have to do better than that. Um, yeah, I'd help out back there, but um, I've, I've, oh, yep, there come the Jutland storms. Oh, okay, the Jutland is not a danger to anybody. Do you see why the Jutland is not a danger to anybody? Because he fires all his torpedoes from extreme range in a single file. Um, that means the Jutland is not actually all that dangerous, because that's not something you would do. Especially not at a Bowen battleship, because you know a Bowen battleship is going to, uh, well, not 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 hit those torpedoes most of the time. Okay, um, Yudland is sailing around somewhere uh, without being spotted. Now you can do this from stealth, from a good angle, but not not when I know that you're there and in, I know that you'll be shooting at me. So I'm gonna poke my nose out again, and of course I lose my turret. Uh, this much for the uh, you could use the battery, main battery re reload module. Um, you'd be losing your turrets in a uh, in no time. We're still ahead on points though, so I'm just gonna try not to die to the Jutland in case he's repositioned. But uh, that enemy Amagi is of course now outgunning me, and uh, oh yeah, there come some more torpedoes. You see, this is what I mean. <laughs> it's it's nice nice try Jutland, but um, you're gonna have to do better than that. Uh, so secondaries on target as soon as the casemates turning around uh, the secondary dispersion is dreadful but you know we do what we can uh, let's get the high, the high explosive out he is out he is outside secondary range but his torpedoes should be reloaded soonishly so um, I am just gonna keep it that way 
because at, uh, with the maneuverability of something like the Amagi, yep, there, there comes some more torpedo. Where? Wait, are these? Okay, ghost torpedoes. Never mind, uh, the Yudland did not shoot any more torpedoes. Uh, yeah, with with the maneuverability, oh, dispersion. The maneuverability of something like um, like an Amagi, you really don't want to get into a close range fight with the destroyer. Uh, unfortunately, at long range, the Yudland can do that sort of thing. And this is why I'm not damage con controlling single fires. Okay, uh, yeah, he's maneuvering and I'm never gonna hit him at this range, not with much at least. Uh, we're still ahead, 40 points ahead, on 40 points ahead. so um, we just have to not die. And uh, everybody, except for that Iowa, who's trying very hard, not, who's trying very hard to win harder, uh, everybody seems to be okay with this. Lightning, stop, stop, we're, we're winning. We've still got 15 seconds, just, just don't. Yeah, there's some, some, some Hail Mary torps from the Jutland. Okay, the Lightning manages to dodge those. I'm gonna get some parting shots out at the Jutland. And uh, we've got five seconds down for... Oh, great. The Iowa's gotten himself killed. Oh, well. <laughs> Who saw that one coming? <laughs> and he's, uh, the M uh, MVP goes to the Azuma. Uh, does Azuma have torpedoes? I can't remember. But there was a Takao, and that thing definitely has torpedoes. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Okay, well... Uh, where did we end up in the team? Let's have a quick look. We did 70,000 points of damage, which is, uh, once again, not too, too shabby. Yeah, the Iowa comes on top of the team. Yay! <laughs> well done, you! Good job. <laughs> nah, it's fine. Look, uh, heat of battle, right? Not everybody keeps an eye on the scoreboard. Hell, I don't always do that as well, either. Uh, as you've seen in my Z23 review, where I missed out the crucial junction and uh, got myself killed as well. But yeah, uh, if you're winning, um, try not to win harder. That is just generally a good idea. Uh, yeah, the Amagi. Um, it's a it's a tier, it's a tier eight Nagato, for all intents and purposes, with with worse armor and worse maneuverability and slightly better AA. That's really all there is to say about it. So I would see this as a. Uh, well, I've heard terrible things about the Izumo tier nine as well. So I would say this is a stepping stone. Let's let's take it as a stepping stone towards the Yamato, which is the big payoff at the end of the line where you all want to get to, me my, me and myself included. So I will be playing the Yamagi on my personal account because I am trying to get Yamamoto onto the Yamato. And um, yeah, am I going to enjoy it? Probably not hugely, but hell, you know, it's worse. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.